welcome to our service here at Vineyard Church. So glad to have you. We are going to be talking today about a very important topic, and that is anxiety. Therapists have been saying that the anxiety load they're getting in their counseling sessions is going way, way up. In fact, they now have a term that they're calling election stress disorder because so many people are at these high anxiety levels. The American Psychological Association has said that it's been trending up now for almost two decades. It just keeps going up and going up and going up. The CDC has reported that its anxiety for the average person is three times higher than just last year. Obviously, that's certainly the election, but the coronavirus and all the other things that seem to have hit on this incredible year of challenge for us. And so we're going to be talking about the importance of of uh, managing anxiety, having self-control, having control over that. I love this verse. It seems so apropos for uh, this, uh, this weekend. Moderation is better than muscle and self-control is better than Political power. A lot of people want political power. I'm not sure everybody wants self-control so much. And yet that is so important. So in this day and age, certainly this weekend, as we're going into this election, we're going to be talking about how to manage, uh, how to beat anxiety that is associated with either pre- or post-election results because uh, I'm guessing about half of the people in our democratic republic will be suffering from anything associated with anxiety or depression or all kinds of things uh, when their person or their people uh, don't get in. Uh, That happens every presidential election. And so this, I'm sure, will prove to be the same. But that doesn't have to be us. You know, as Christ followers, he offers us a different route. And we're going to be talking about how to do that. What I want to do first, though, is is how do you really know if anxiety is a concern for you? If that's something you need to address, here's some of the things that uh, will be associated with it. First thing, you just have a lot of stress in your life. You just have a lot of stress going on. When you have prolonged stress in your life, it actually takes a toll on your body. There's actually a physiological thing that's going on where there's these stress hormones, the adrenaline, the cortisol, these different stress hormones that they start to wreak havoc on your body. They suppress the natural uh, tranquilizers, the relaxers that your body has, the hormones like dopamine. Those actually get suppressed when you have high levels of cortisol and adrenaline going on in your body that, is, that comes from anxiety. And so stress is one of those symptoms where we, and, and, and it ends up causing us to uh, harm ourselves. We don't even care uh, for ourselves and, and maybe it's not even intentional, but that's the result. That's certainly the result. Uh, another is we just lose our joy. How long has it been since you've had uh, joy in your life when you go to, uh, to throughout your day and, you know, and, and you just don't have joy and it's, Day after day after day, some people, they fall into a hole of depression. And that hole is hard to get out of. That's another way of saying I don't have joy in my life. That is a result of sustained anxiety in your life. It says, my day go by faster than a runner. They fly away without my seeing any joy. That describes some of you. How long has it been since you've had joy a fair question and it's an important question if you're going to be assessing hey do I have runaway anxiety it's out of control in my life another is just I'm just less productive in other words not just at work but certainly that includes work where you're just distracted but it hits you emotionally any creative person knows this that when you're dealing with lots of anxiety lots of worry stress it it starts to sap your emotional and your creative strength it, it causes you to slow down mentally. Your memory is affected. That impacts your productivity. But you just don't have uh, any excitement. The hope often is removed out of uh, your life. And so it affects everything, whether you're at work, whether you're a productive parent, a productive uh, uh, student, whatever you do, uh, it affects that. Now, the Bible actually has a promise associated with being with an answer. It says here, those whose hope is in the Lord, 
In other words, your hope is not on what's going on around you, where all the anxiety is coming from. Your hope is locked into the Lord. Then you'll get strength. You'll have renewed strength. And then I love this analogy. You're actually going to soar above. You know, like wings like eagles, they'll run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. And so that's God's promise. But anxiety causes us to not have this experience. And then I stop caring for my body. It starts affecting the way I I stop exercising. I stop uh, uh, getting the sleep I need. I stop eating well. All kinds of things because we're trying to handle the anxiety. And when we have lots of anxiety... It's a natural law of equilibrium. We're trying, to, uh, we're trying to equalize that pressure, all of that emotional stress and pressure in our lives. And so we, we have different ways of coping with that, you know, coping mechanisms. And some people, they, you know, they, they smoke or they smoke pot or they do medication or they just drink a lot. And, and what happens is they're trying to uh, handle all of that anxiety in their life and it ends up causing, causing problems. Here's an example. He says some people, they just drink so much, you know, they're just getting drunk all the time. But it could be anything. Uh, but he says, but it just causes dissipation. You know, it just causes us to not, it, we're not caring for our body. We're just, we're just dissipating. Uh, there's no focus to our life. We're just trying to get through. We're trying to handle the anxiety Instead of letting God do something in our life, we're instead of being filled with the Spirit. That's part of the answer, which we'll look at in just a moment. And then I have disrupted sleep cycles. Now, I already mentioned earlier about, you know, the sleep, uh, but sometimes that's more of just an indication I've got problems. You know, I'm not sleeping. I don't have peace. I'm worrying all the time. And this is an indication that, you know, I'm having this high level of anxiety. In fact, when we have sustained levels of anxiety, I mentioned a couple of the hormones, cortisol, uh, that, that uh, comes into our body. And then that actually starts to disrupt, again, physiological, the hippocampus, part of our brain that helps with our sleep cycle. It actually shrinks that. If it's sustained over a period of time, it actually starts to change not just our brain patterns, but the size of that organ in our brain that is controls our sleep. So it starts to mess with that. So you know, there's a physiological part to having all of this anxiety. It says you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. In other words, whether you're awake or whether you're asleep, it's still what you're thinking about, what you're dreaming about. Uh, God says he offers peace because when we trust in him. And then the worst of all, we just feel distant from God. We can't hear his voice. We can't hear from God. We're not getting clear direction. We read the Bible and that doesn't seem to be penetrating all those things. This is when we just are all up in a in 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 uh in a tizzy and all letting all of the anxiety uh dominate us, have that control instead of letting our trust in him. He says God says calm down. Bring the anxiety down. Dial this thing down a little bit so I can speak to you. He goes, and that's when we can start to learn what God has for us. He's got a better way for us. He wants us to have soul care. In other words, all of the things the world offers, and if it, sometimes that's in juxtaposition to caring for what God has for us. And he goes, there's no competition. He goes, what does it profit somebody who gains everything the world has to offer? The whole world, but you don't care for your soul. You lose your soul in the, cir- in, in, in the process. And so soul care is really important. That's really what we're talking about today is, is caring for your soul, don't let, no, not letting anxiety run amok, uh, no matter what's going on, election year or not. How do we do that? Well, here's how we manage it. First of all, you've got to be aware. You've got to be aware of mental health. How are you doing? If you were to go and get a physical checkup, uh, you, you, you might not even need a physical checkup to know you're not doing well. You just have pain in your life. Pain is an indication. It's like that dashboard light that says you're not doing well physically. And so, but how do we, what's the dashboard for our mental health? What is it? Well, it's the six things we just looked at. You know, you're, you, you start to go down that checklist. You go, I've got sustained stress in my life. I, I don't have joy. I'm, I have depression going on in my life. I'm not productive. I'm not care, caring for my body. I'm not sleeping well. I feel distant from God. I can't hear his voice. All of those things are pain 
Me- that's an indication for your mental health. I'm not doing well. I need to address this. Sometimes, though, physiologically, with our physical body, we, we need to actually have somebody uh, help us. You know, we go to a medical professional, and they do a blood test, and they look at our, uh, you know, our, our salt levels, our hormone levels. They look at our, you know, our cholesterol level. All, and they can tell you when you're not even aware sometimes that you've got a problem. Well, God places people in your life that care about you. And when they say, hey, are you doing okay? That may be God saying, you know, using them to speak to you. It says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test my thoughts. Point out anything. Sometimes God uses other people to help us identify, maybe I'm not doing so well, and find me anything that makes you sad. In other words, God says, I have something better for you than this. I don't want you to be uh, suffering with all that anxiety and, you know, you're not productive, you don't have any joy, you're all under stress, all those things that we just looked at. God says, I've got something better. And then get enough sleep and watch what you eat. Some things are in our control. Now, if you have sleep difficulties, that th- there's, it's, you're, it's not just that one thing. We're going to look at six different things. When you address the other things we're talking about, uh, it will affect your sleep. Because we're integrated. We're not just, sleep's not all on its own. But there are some things that we can do uh, to uh, help us to sleep better. Uh, Instead of just going right to the medicine cabinet, uh, right to some alcohol or smoking pot or whatever, uh, you know, your vice may be to try to solve this. Uh, But one of the things we can do that really helps a lot is help, is work with our body. When, When we're about an hour out or so, of wanting to sleep, uh, then, you know, not turning on the large screen TV with the blaring political drama going on, that's probably not going to help you to sleep very well. Uh, So maybe turning the TV off, maybe getting some dimmers on your light switches so that you can start dimming those. Uh, That happens if you've ever gone camping and you're out, you know, you see a fire, a campfire, you start getting your melatonin starting to be released in your body, which helps you to sleep. So you start working with some of the hormones in your body, uh, some of the ways that you want to just calm yourself down, relax. uh, and, and, And of course, you can get a better pillow or whatever, all those things. But working with that, you know, hey, I I have to recognize having sleep is important. And then also what we eat, of course, impacts that. If we exercise, impacts that. They're all connected, as I said. It says God wants his loved ones to get their proper rest. That certainly includes sleep. And he says, hey, I I might be allowed to do stuff because we have a lot of freedom as Christ followers because it doesn't mean that it's all good for us. And so we want to make sure and make good decisions that will impact not just our sleep, but our anxiety, our lack of it. Meditating on God's Word. This is really important. Reading God's Word, reading the Bible, very, very important. But just going through and trying to read as many chapters as you can isn't meditating. It may be valuable, but it's not meditating. Meditating is something where you're letting it soak into your soul, soak into your, into your psyche. Just really thinking about it. For example, here's a way to meditate. You could take one verse, like Philippians 4.13, and say it repeatedly over and over, but emphasizing a different word each time. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And then you emphasize each one of those words. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So that's a way of meditating, taking a key verse, really thinking about it, you know, emphasizing different words, putting your name in there. You can go to the Psalms, powerful, powerful, reading a Psalm and thoughtfully and prayerfully right before you go to bed. I used to do that with my kids when they were little. I have three boys. When they were little, 
We had a two-bedroom house, and so they were all in the, in the same room together for many, all throughout their preschool years. And I would just read together with them. They would all repeat it out. We'd repeat it together. Uh, they had it memorized, Psalm 23. Same psalm. Did it all through from birth all the way through preschool, all the way through, uh, all the way into high school. We eventually got a house where they had different bedrooms. But, but we, and then I would just stand in the hallway. They'd all have their doors open. And we would repeat it together. It was just something we always did. I wanted to teach them because as parents, we're, in, we're trying to teach our kids certain things. We want to teach them values like honesty or uh, a good work ethic, whether in school or whatever they do. We want to teach them maybe about finances and how to invest and how to think through their finances and tithe. And then also one of, one of the things I wanted to make sure and do is just teach our kids how to meditate on God's word. That doesn't just naturally happen. That's something, that's a skill set, that's something we learn to do, and it helps bring our anxiety down. It says, cast all your anxiety on God because God cares for you. That's, a, that's, that's what we're talking about here. That's meditating when we're casting our anxiety on Him. Then get support. Support's really important where we, we're not doing this alone. It's not a solo thing, especially with mental health. Experts will tell you, you don't do it alone. In fact, alone is part of the problem. When we don't share, when we're not opening up, when we keep our mask on, somebody talks to us and we're not really honest with them. It says anxious fear brings depression, but a life-giving word of encouragement can do wonders to restore joy to the heart. What an incredible verse. I love this verse because to me, this phrase here describes what a small group is all about. A life-giving word of encouragement. A small group is a place where we can get support. Now, we have online small groups, certainly, and I encourage you uh, to be part of one. I think we have eight uh, Zoom groups, and it's not too late. You can jump in, if you're in one, to make sure and be there. Show up, and show up and be present. And, uh, you know, don't just turn your camera off and, you know, be, some, be, be part of what's going on there and bring a life-giving word of encouragement and let the, and, and I encourage you to receive that because it'll be there. That's what our small groups are all about. I love my small group that's happening here at the church on Tuesday nights. And that's what, that, that's what defines that group. It's a group where we are giving life-giving words of encouragement to one another. More than that, but that certainly is a beautiful description of that. Another thing is just good, good old-fashioned counseling. And again, you can do that in Zoom. There's lots of counseling. If you need uh, a reference for counseling, we certainly can give that to you here. Contact us. We'll be happy to give you some, some references of some amazing counselors. I have a counselor that I see once a month on Zoom, and my counselor actually is a specialist in anxiety. And they're anxiety counselors, and they, they're, they're Philosophy is that any change causes anxiety. How are you going to handle that anxiety? Anxiety is going to ha happen. How do you handle it? And, uh, and so she's been real helpful for me. One of the things that I'm not sure is all that helpful, I'm not saying don't be on social media. I'm just saying don't expect your, uh, your mental health support to happen through social media. I guess unless you've defriended everybody who uh, disagrees with you. I don't know. But, but, you know, that may not be the place where you're going to get that. Uh, be careful about that. But in a small group, certainly, and in counseling is another way. Then learn to access God's peace in your life. God offers peace. Peace, uh, now here's how he defines the kind of peace he's talking about is not based on circumstances. It's not only if you're at a lake fishing and everything's real calm, no, no matter what it is. Here's what he says. He says, and the peace of God that is beyond all understanding. In other words, you don't get it just in a normal way. It's something God does in your life. And that peace that God gives guards both your heart and your mind. Those are the things that often people try to rob our peace. When we have peace, listen, other people will notice that you have peace. And when they're not in peace, they don't like that. And you probably, I'm sure you know this. People, there's peace robbers everywhere, and they want to rob you of the peace you have. That's why you have to have access to constantly being refilled with God's peace. Because there's people that will try to steal your peace, and they'll try to ruffle your feathers. They'll try to label you. They'll try to shame you. They'll try to do whatever they can to rob you of the peace that is yours through Christ Jesus. And so you have to have access to that, knowing God wants you to have that kind of peace in your life. 
in the multitude of my anxieties within me, your comfort, God, delight my soul. God will give you comfort. He'll give you the peace that you need to get through, and you don't have to get caught up in those anxieties. Here's this wonderful prayer uh, that I think really is a, a prayer about getting God's peace. We're talking about accessing God's peace, and most of you know the serenity prayer. You've heard it before. God, grant me the serenity or the peace to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. So one of the things you might want to do is just write down a list of all the things that bug you that you can't change, and just write as fear as you can for about 10 minutes, and then get as angry as you want, as fume and get anxious and all that. And then once that's over, just tear it up and throw it away because you cannot change those things. And if you get caught up in that, you'll have that rob you of peace time and time again. So just having the recognition, there's a lot of things I can't really change, and that's okay. You know what's interesting about this prayer is this is not actually the whole prayer. I don't know if you know this, but there's actually when uh, this gentleman here, Reinhard Niebuhr, wrote this prayer, this is just the beginning of the prayer. Here's how the rest of the prayer goes. Living one day at a time, great advice. Enjoying one moment at a time. Accepting hardship as a pathway to peace. So not one and the same. It's actually the pathway to peace. Taking, as Jesus did, the sinful world as it is, not as I would have it. So instead of trying to change the whole world around you, just recognize, hey, I I can change me. I can control me, not others, trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will, God, so that I may be reasonably happy in this life. That's a key phrase there in that prayer. And supremely happy with you forever in the next. In other words, recognizing that if God doesn't bless me, and this is true for me, if, if God doesn't bless me one more day, one more thing, I still have. He's given me and blessed me more than most people, certainly more than I deserve. And so, you know, when you have that attitude, uh, you start just appreciating things more. You're driving home and you appreciate, you know, the fall and the trees and whatever. You just start to appreciate having that will help you access much more peace. Lastly, get an eternal perspective. You know, having the big picture. I know a lot of people more and more are getting cremated and they're thinking, oh, then it's over, that's it. If, if this is all you're living for, this world, then God's peace doesn't, you don't have access to that. God's peace comes when you have the eternal perspective. You're seeing things bigger than just what is around you. Recognize, the Bible says that we're not citizens in this world. Our citizenry is in heaven. And, and reminding yourself of that. Hey, this is, I'm, a, I'm just passing through. I'm just passing through. I, I know somebody who chose, their, he just passed away just a couple years ago, but he, chose, he lived his whole life. He never bought a home. He, and his rationale was, it's a constant reminder to me that I'm passing through. I don't want to get, I don't want to get too settled down here. This isn't my, my, my home. I'm, I'm, he, I'm heavenward. And reminding yourself, having an eternal perspective. Bible says, Think about where your eyes are fixed. Fix your eyes, not on what's seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary. What is unseen is eternal, having that eternal perspective. And certainly that impacts our prayer. So when you're going through life, you're not just looking around. You're looking up. You're looking to God. God, show me what's really happening here. Uh, Because there's more than just a virus. There's more than just uh, a vaccine, more than just a treatment. More than just whether kids will go to school or not, or how, uh, you know, how many Zoom meetings I'm in, or all these things. God is at work. He's not necessarily bringing those things, but He is at work through them. But if, you're not, if you don't have an eternal perspective, you'll, you'll probably miss that. And so seeing that, having that perspective, but then also fight the war that is spiritual. Because there is a spiritual war going on. Uh, and prayer is not just communion with God, it's confrontation with the devil. In other words, you see things from a different perspective. You get above that. You know, when you go flying, if you fly on a day when the weather's really bad, it's raining. Uh, when you're here, before you get up off the ground, you see your luggage getting wet. You might get wet. I mean, it's, just, it's ugly outside. But when you get above the clouds, you start to see it from a whole, hey, the sun's shining. 
It's great up here. And each day, remind yourself, from a bigger perspective, looking up, God, I know you're in charge. You're in charge. That is not the message that comes off in our society from the news, from people around us. It feels so often out of control. You know, November 3rd, it's, out, you know, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. Hey, God's in charge. God is in control. And regardless of what happens, his will is going to be advanced. And he has an, et- he has an eternal perspective, certainly. He wants to give us that as well. You want your anxiety to drop. Wow. That will help your anxiety to drop, realizing, hey, regardless of what happens, God's will is going to, is going to happen. I want to be part of that. It, nothing catches him off guard. I want to experience the peace of God, get the support that he has, take care of my body, be aware of mental health issues. Those are obviously important. Uh, all of these things we've been talking about, vital, meditating on God's word, and, 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 and that'll give you the peace that God has for you. That will reduce your anxiety. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you have answers for us. We just need to step out and do them. And we need to be aware that, that we, for those of you who are, had one or more of that list of six, just say, God, I, I'm aware that maybe things are veering off a little bit for me. I need to get centered again. I need to care for my soul. And that's the beginning part where you just go, God, help me to be aware of that. Help me to take care of my soul. Help me to get on the same page with you. If you're struggling with depression, don't do it alone. Reach out and get some support. Get counseling. Go to a small group. Do what you need to do. Contact us here at the church. There's some people here that will support you. We have godly counselors that will help you. You say, God, help me to meditate on God's word. Help me to meditate on your living word that will feed my soul. And the Lord, give me your peace. Would you say that? God, today I need your peace. More of your peace that transcends whatever my understanding is. It's bigger than that. And give me an eternal perspective. If you've never asked Christ into your life, you can do that right now. Say, God, I want to follow you. I want to put my faith in in you and follow you with everything I have. You say, God, forgive me for trying to do this on my own. I need your help. I need the help of people around me that will encourage me and be a a life-giving words of encouragement. You say, God, today I want to start fresh with you. I want to follow your son, Jesus Christ. I'm going to start reading your word. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I'm so proud of you if you are stepping out and saying, I'm trusting God with my life. For some of you, you made that decision. Let me know about it. You can do that by typing in no God to this number here, 704-5504. If you're on Vineyard Live, there's a pop-up that says, I raised my hand. I'm putting my faith in Christ. Let us know about that so we can pray for you. I can pray for you. I'd love to know about your decision. I want to help you with your next step uh, and help you... uh, we're doing baptisms here on November 20th and 21st. Uh, if you think you can be part of that, uh, we'd love to have you here. Uh, we'll do more in the future. But that's an important step if you've put your faith in Christ. If you have a prayer request, let us know. You can just type in pray to the same number, and we'll be happy to pray for you. Uh, also, here's a way that you can support what we're doing here at Vineyard, a way that you can help as we rally together to uh Reach the world for Christ. Help people know how they can deal with the problems that the world brings to them uh, through, through God's ways. And, uh, and so the easiest way is probably just texting 45777 VCC in the amount. Of course, you can mail a check. Uh, that would work as well. Uh, and uh, go on our website. All that information is there. Well, thank you again for coming and being part of it. You'll want to be part of our series as we launch at the movies next week. It's going to be uh, so terrific. We have four inspirational movies that we're going to be looking at over throughout the, the month of November. It'll really, really uh, bring your spirits up. Uh, it's, they're terrific movies. They all came out uh, last year. And you won't want to miss that. Certainly uh, invite a friend to be part of that with you. Okay, God bless. See you next week.